I think one of the things that you said was like nowadays is that a uh, capitalistic way we look at life, especially like I, I don't know the like the scenes of surgery, but thing is like what's being promoted, like especially when it comes to social media as well. Mm. Everything is tips of our like fingers. Like when it comes to guys, drug money. When it comes to girls, only fan is so enticing to them. Mm. So guess what? So now they put themselves out there in a way at a young age where you're exposed. A- as a woman, like that's something that, you know, I feel like you need to preserve almost in a sense where that's something that you own, right? And then now you're you're putting it out for the whole world to see. It's like sometimes when you do go out in the actual real world, you might feel like not naked, like as in like actual visual, like, but you might feel naked as a person that mm. insecurities that are kicking in because now it's like you lost in touch of what reality is, you know? And I think that's what the issue is nowadays, even with guys, it's like for them, okay, get into drug, easy money, I'll get all the girls, hmm. Yo, uh, you're at the same corner every weekend in the club, yeah. telling all the girls you're getting validated for that time period of frame, but four years passes by, have no personal development has been done just because you think this is what life is, right? And now, and that's what's being promoted now. This is what normal, li- normal is. Like, amount of time, like, you know, I, I have this debate a lot with a lot of people. I'm like, I don't, I, I, I don't, like, OnlyFans, I don't, I don't condone it, whether it's a man or a woman. I, I, I don't try to, you know, subject it to it, oh, a woman can't do it. Man or a woman, you know, that's something, especially, like, if there's something sexually explicit, that should be, you should preserve for your partner, whoever it is, because that is something that you should cherish, mm. right? But nowadays, they're like, no, like, we live in a different world, but I'm like, no, we do not. You guys just want to this be normalized so you guys are not judged or you don't look at it as like, oh, I'm not doing anything wrong. But in reality, you are. So you're selling your soul to the devil, but you think you're not. Mm. You know? What's your outlook on that when it comes to that? Because, like, you know, you <laughs> look at the both spectrum. Because now you, you live in Surrey. You have seen, like, the drug violence. So a lot of the guys do get into yeah. it. And, you know, vice versa. Even with girls, like, now it's like, make they put themselves more explicitly with the clothes they wear and stuff like that. They are tend to be more exposed just because of why? Because it gets them more in clicks and sell because sex sells. That's, mm. that's what always been sex sells. So for them be like, okay, sells, I'm getting my money up. Okay. I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it. And it's the same thing with drugs. Okay. This is how much it makes. Okay. I'm gonna get more. Mm. I'm gonna get more. It's like the same thing, but a different perspective, but it's the same thing though. Well, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I don't like to pass any judgments and uh, make any comments Comments. around sex work because I am a firm believer in people should do whatever they they want want. with their bodies. Mm. Um, It's not for me to judge whether it's good or not. I I don't do it because that's not aligned with my values Values, and that's that's that. But I will say that I find that at the core of what drives all human behavior is belonging, is feeling connected, it's feeling loved. So love, connection, belonging are really all three of the same Same things for me. And what really drives all of us is belonging. My favorite understanding of why people go into gangs is that they're looking for a sense of belonging. Belonging. So I did my Mm. master's on this. It's like, what are the push and pull factors for young people who go into gangs, particularly young South Asian boys? The push and pull factors typically, if you look at like what most of them had in their homes is absent fathers. Uh, maybe alcoholism. Rhythm, yeah. um, their parents might have been first generation or like immigrants Immigrant, and they were first generation. Yep. Uh, language barriers, not maybe having enough money where they were like wearing cool clothes. But then you also see that a lot of these homes are affluent, like they have big houses, nice cars. cars yep. A lot of it is not like consistent parenting. Their parents mm, were, yep. their checklists were different. different so it's yep. like, as a parent, I have to provide for my child. I have to pay for their education. I have to buy a home. I have to buy them a car. And maybe if they want to go buy a Louis Vuitton purse, I want to yeah. be able to afford that. I'm a good parent. Whereas the child's checklist could have been, I needed my dad to ask me how my day was. Mm. I needed to go to Disneyland with my parents on vacation because Stacy's freaking parents went <laughs> and took her. Yeah. So like, I think at the core of what, what drives all human behavior is belonging and well, connection. Yeah.